that we see this pattern in worship that our worship cannot be detached from the experiences of our life. You know, if you that's why you can't come in before God and you just had an argument with, with, with your family member and just come in and just, just worship like nothing happened. In Malachi, he said, leave your gift at the altar. Go back and get it straight, <laughs> you know, with your wife or with your husband or whoever. Because who God, when he re receives our worship, he's looking at our heart, not what comes out of our mouth. So that we can praise him, um, understanding why we're blessing the Lord tonight, I wanted to ask um, Sister Janet, would she come? Because she was here in the building when the whole situation started. I want her to tell you what happened so that we can know what the attack was, huh? how God preserved us. You might not even understand wh what we were just saved from, but the Bible promises us that, that, wh that whatever the devil meant for evil, that what God would do is turn it around. He'll turn it around. He'll turn it around and make it work for our good. The promise is not that he'll keep everything from happening, but when it happens, he'll turn it. And only God can do that. Only God can do that. But here's the beautiful part. See, either he is who he says he is or he isn't. So if he can turn one situation, that means that everything in my life that's out of order, that the devil has sent every attack that's meant to take me down or to take me out, that same God can turn it. It doesn't matter if it's a financial issue, if it's a health issue, if it's a career issue, it doesn't matter what it is. He's the God that can turn it. Do they have a name for that one yet? That's not us. What is that name? The God that can turn it. We might have to make up one because every generation demands a demonstration, right, of the church of Jesus Christ relevant to his time. And so and that's the language of our day. He can turn it. So I want you to hear uh, the, the account of what happened so that when we begin to bless the Lord tonight, that it's coming from a place of, 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 of understanding and clarity. We're not going to turn our mind off in worship. We're not just trying to get a good feeling with this song, right? But we want to purposely worship the Lord. So let's receive, says the Janet. Good afternoon, saints. Um, while the uh, Firm Foundation faculty uh, was in place getting ready to get, you know, prepare for our open house tomorrow and the staff, the church staff busy doing their own thing, I received a phone call. It's about 5.15 to 5.30. And this is one of the parents of uh, my after schoolers and he called, he said, Ms. Johnson, I see smoke on your roof. And I said, oh. We have roofers working today. Uh, so this, they're up there working. He says, no, I don't see any roofers. He said, but I see smoke and I see black smoke. And uh, I said, well, let me come out and check and see what's going on. So well, by the time I got there, not only did you see the black smoke, you saw the flames as well. Mm. But you know, I, I praise God, we wouldn't have known anything in here. We, di we didn't know, we wouldn't have known. That flame was on top of the building on the far side, and all of us was in here doing our thing, in our own zone. So I praise God for even bringing Davy Brown by here today. He was coming to meet Greg, and just so happened to be sitting on the parking lot waiting for him when he sees the smoke. And he said, if, 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 I, if he had not gotten me on my cell, he said, I got a ladder on my truck. He told me in the back, he said, I got a ladder and I got a fire extinguisher and I would have gone up there myself. That, and he's not even a member here. He's not a member, but praise God for Davy. But I praise God, amen. The, 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 the blessing, the biggest blessing is everybody got out safely. Um, I'm busy getting people out of the building. I called 911, told them, fire station number 17 right around the corner, but it took him a minute, but it was, it took him a minute. I don't, I don't know what the deal was, but Will came back in, praise God, looking for Sandra, had to get Sandra out of the basement, and um, everybody's fine. Hallelujah. Everybody's fine. Hallelujah. So I, I, I just thank God for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I don't want you to see how God preserved us, because we don't believe in, circ in happenstance. That brother didn't just happen to have a meeting Hallelujah. with Greg Gates today. He didn't just happen to pull up early and sit in the right spot to be able to see the flames when he did. He could have got hung up in traffic. Can you think of all the things that could have happened? But God. 
And so because of that, it was preserved. We were able to get uh, some assistance here. And yes, there's some damage, but look what didn't happen. Hallelujah. See, look what didn't happen. And then, I don't know why this thing keeps ringing in my heart, but of all the places, the flames had to be right over the pastor's head. This whole building and all the places the fire could have started, the one place that started the fire right over pastor's office, right, right where the man of God resides, his place is where the flame started. So when I tell people, I say, I don't know what happened today, but there's fire over the head of my pastor. That's my report. There's fire over the head of my pastor. And so goes the priest, so goes the people. Amen. So listen, we need to praise God. And even though this is not connected, but just to give, show you how God is moving, there's a young lady at our job um, that today, we were, we, she came into the office from a meeting and she was getting ready to go home, open her door and saw smoke. Mm -hmm. So she went to the other side, opened the door and smoke came out that side. And then she saw some smoke from the trunk. She opened the trunk and some clothes were in the trunk smothering with smoke, pulled it out. Uh, tried to get some of the clothes out, went back inside to tell people to get the fire extinguisher, came back out, and the whole car was in flame. I don't think she really understood what happened until I had a chance. I said, Lord, let me talk to her. And I, I said, I, girl, the Lord preserved you. Can you imagine if you had gotten in that car, started driving home down I-20 in the middle lane? Because, you know, not too many of us ride in the right lane. So you in the middle lane, traffic on both sides, and all of a sudden now flames coming. Who's to say you're gonna be able to pull over quick enough? Or what could have happened? The gas tank could have blown up. Look what God preserved her from. That's the kind of God we serve. I was thinking as we were taking all things into consideration, a few words that begin with S, thinking about the suddenness things, how things can happen so suddenly. We can be in one frame of mind and things going in a particular direction and then all of a sudden everything can change. Everything can shift in a moment's notice and I believe for the most part that serves as a warning to us to say that we can't just be at ease in Zion because of the fact that things happen unexpectedly. But then the other word was safety, security. How God superintends, I like that word, He superintends over all the affairs of our lives. We talk about superintends, intends, superintends. He oversees everything in our lives. He's there and nothing is by coincidence. But there's a purpose for everything happening the way they happen. I couldn't even get there because of all times there was a, 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 an accident on uh, 138. And I mean, the traffic was standstill for over a half hour, 40. I was stuck in traffic for over a half hour, 45 minutes trying to get here because of the fact that I was told that the church was burning and couldn't get out of traffic. So I had to exercise patience. But then the whole thing of safety, security. And then the other is that if things happen so suddenly and things, uh, we're safe and secure in Him, as people of God, we can't be silent. We have to open up our mouths. The things that God spoke to us, things that we ought to be about doing, don't take time for granted. But let's seize the moment. Let's take full advantage of every opportunity God has given us just to think it could have been anything but understand God permitted it to happen he permitted it now when I talk about permitting it to happen understand that uh, we don't understand all the parameters and everything that's con connected to it but if it's, if God permitted it then uh, apparently God is seeing something and we're yet to see what he sees so we thank you Lord for all that you are doing among us thank you Lord for the positioning of your people Lord you bring us to a place where we will have a sense of urgency like never before even as your word goes forth Lord my prayer is that your word will take root and adhere to the hearts of your people. 
that the truth, Lord, will be understood by those, O oh Lord, that's been called together. So, Lord, today that we, as we've been called together, we, the, the, the ecclesia, the called out ones, but yet called together to hear from you. May your word take root. May your word spoken, Lord, become life within us. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And the church said, Amen. 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 Amen.